Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my monthly recap for September. So September was an interesting month. Um, I've been struggling with my skin a lot um, and uh, it was kind of good for a while and then really really bad for a while and now it's improving again. Um, so I was kind of like doing these ones with the makeup and the skincare and stuff like that. Uh, so I don't really have a lot to talk about this month, but there are some things that really stood out to me that I am keen to talk about. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about are some products from Kester Black. So nail polish type products. Now they released a nail health line um, which includes the self love oil so this is like a cuticle oil um, they have said that this is completely multi-purpose you can even use it on your face and stuff like that um, I've just been using it as a nail oil um, they have the miracle treatment base coat so this is um, a base coat for your nails and it's meant to help nourish them then there is a supersonic top coat which is a quick dry top coat you can see I've really uh, I've been really getting into that one um, and then they have the rest and repair wonder mask and this is a mask that you put on bare nails or even on your cuticles I've done that uh, overnight and then rinse it off in the morning it's just a like a nourishing overnight treatment so I've been playing with these, oh, dropping things, I've been playing with these quite a bit. Um, I think my favourite picks from the range are the Supersonic Top Coat and the Miracle Treatment Base Coat. Um, I am, okay, usually I wear gel polish and that's what I'm wearing today. And the reason I usually opt for a gel manicure is because my nails just don't hold on to traditional nail polish. Usually I have chipping or complete peeling and lifting uh, within 24 hours. Now, these guys, they're not a miracle product for me, but I find that I'm getting about double the time out of using these as I usually would with nail polish, chipping and lifting. So usually around 48 hours. For me, that's actually pretty good. I know for some people that's not gonna sound great, but I think if you are the type of person who also really struggles with keeping standard nail polish on your nails, uh, you might understand why that sort of excites me a bit. Now, if you are one of those blessed people who can get a week out of a standard nail polish manicure, then you might really enjoy these because you might be able to double that time. I don't know. You would, you'd have to try it yourself. But I really like these. Um, the base coat is very pretty. It's actually like a... Um, I don't think I'll be able to show you, but it's got like an iridescence. Let's turn some lights off. There you go. So you can catch that sort of peachy iridescence that it has. And that does show up on the nails if you use it uh, just on its own, which I've done. It's pretty as just a, a treatment base coat, um, or you can then put a colored polish over the top. I really like that one. Then there is the supersonic top coat and this is meant to be a quick drying top coat and it is definitely quick drying. I would consider this um, a little bit similar to Siege Vite in the sense that it, it's like it shrink wraps nail polish. Um, so <laughs> the way that I like to use this is to cap the tip of the nail and then paint the nail bed uh, and essentially what that does is it makes sure the whole nail is covered all of the nail polish underneath is covered so when it sets it's really locked in um, I find that if you don't cap the nail tip with this polish and many that are like this in the sense that they're like quick drying and they're meant to like really lock everything in it will pull the polish from the tip of the nail. So highly recommend capping the tips of your nails if you don't do that. Um, but I really like this. Beautiful and glossy. I 
particularly like using this with glitters uh, it works with every polish but I like top coats that dry quickly that it's because they sort of shrink wrap it like locks the glitter right in um, and I'm gonna talk about another glitter that it, I just I love using it with this basically so let's let's move on um, these are two polishes from their spring collection I have tangerine dream which is a um, it's sort of like a oh it's kind of metallic like a dusty metallic or kind of brushed metallic finish um, and it's oh, I don't even know what to call it like it's not it's gold, but it's also kind of peachy orange. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful color. And I would say quite unique to anything that I have uh, in my current stash. The next one, and this is the one that I'm like, oh, good God, this is, this is my jam. This one is Tutu, and it is a super fine pink glitter, but it's, it's not the type of glitter polish that is uh, like a transparent base with a few flecks of glitter. No, 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 no. This is jam packed. You can get this opaque in two coats. It's beautiful. I adore this. The color is stunning. I'm loving their spring collection. It's so cute. Hang on. Let me look at the other shades. The other ones are Prima Donna, which is like a corally pink almost. It's pretty bright and like it's full on it's a beautiful color and then there's kool-aid which is a stunning stunning blue um, and both prima donna and kool-aid are creme finishes or like the standard um, nail polish finishes and then they've got the metallic and the glitter I love it so fun they're really really lovely I have some SPF products that I want to talk about so ultraviolet which is an Australian sunscreen or shall we call them skin screen brand reached out and asked if I'd like to try some of their SPF products and I was like hell yes I would uh, because I've been having a really difficult time finding some that my skin is coping well with uh, so anyway they basically sent out their whole range so there's an F SPF 50 plus this is the lightweight then there is the SPF 30 which is the mattifying and the SPF 50 plus hydrating so there's one for like all different skin types whatever your preference is uh, they also sent the SPF 30 hydrating lip balm I believe this comes in another scent I think it is original let me double check okay the other one is actually called nude so the one I have is peach it's got like a peach tint and there's a little flash of it there you can see it offers like a peachy pink tint to the skin and then they have it in nude it doesn't this one the peach one doesn't smell like peach it, it doesn't have any scent it's just tinted with a peachy shade the lip balm is really lovely I've been really enjoying it um, I am in desperate need of lip balms with SPF in them uh, so I am forever grateful to have this when I first started using these sunscreens um, my skin was doing all sorts of weird stuff I started out with the hydrating one so this is the SPF 50 plus uh, supreme screen skin screen hydrating skin screen now the reason they call them skin screens is because it is an SPF and skincare in one so you can use these on their own if you uh, don't want to put a moisturizer on so since my skin was quite dry I decided to start with a hydrating one and I really enjoyed it I found it very comfortable um, it wasn't you know sometimes you use a hydrating SPF product and you're just greasy you're just slick and slippery and greasy but that's not really what this does um, it's hydrating without being an oil slick essentially which I really really like um, now for full transparency um, I did have some breakouts when I was using this one and this one which is the lightweight skin screen uh, but I've got to be really clear about this I don't actually know if I can put it down to this or my skin it could have been either or 
I don't know. Um, but I do want to be like transparent about it. Recently, I started using the clean screen because I don't know if you can tell, but I'm already getting oily and I've only had my makeup on for about 45 minutes. Uh, I'm going through a, a thing. My skin is all over me is quite uh, oily at the moment. Um, but I've been using this one, which is the Mattifying Mineral Sunscreen. And this one I really, really enjoy as well for the like crazy oiliness. Um, no breakouts either uh, that I would associate with the SPF. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning more on the side of the sunscreens weren't causing me issues. My skin was causing me issues. Um, I think that's a bit more of a, a fair statement to make. Um, the formula of these, let me pump some out and show you how they look. So this is the uh, matte one and it has a, a slight tint to it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell there, um, but when I compare it to another one, you might be able to see. Uh, this is the lightweight. So there you go, you can probably tell the difference there. And that one there is the hydrating. So again, you can see that one has uh, a tint like the matte one. So I can't really confidently pick a favorite at the moment because while I've been trialing these, you know, if my skin flares up, I've kind of been like, no, I must hibernate and not use anything foreign on my face until it starts to heal. And then I pick up another one and try that. And, you know, I'm kind of back and forth, but I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping knock on wood that, um, my skin's not going to freak out again in any serious way. Um, and I'm going to be able to continue to play with these very confidently and I'm, I'm going to bring them back into next month's recap as well. You, you be, you, you be quiet computer. So like I said, I'll bring these back for next month's recap and hopefully then I'll have some solid feels on them. But if you have tried any of these ultraviolet SPFs, let me know which one's your favorite and why. And like, let me know your skin type as well. Um, because yeah, these are just, I don't know. I've just been really, really, uh, curious and kind of excited about these this month. Um, and I, yeah, I want to, I want to talk about them. So there we go. Um, I think, I think I can get into some makeup. Um, I feel like I better start with something that might, mm, we might have a little bit of a rant. I'm going to talk about this. This is the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette. Um, now, <laughs> Jesus, give me strength. I have tried to film a review of this twice. The first time, my own fault, I didn't have my microphone turned on and I didn't realize until I had finished the whole look. So what I did was I sat down and like just did like at the camera mini reviews of the products that I used in that video or like first impression type reviews. Um, and then I was going to lay the footage over it. I sat down to my computer to edit it and I realized that there was a one file in the middle of the filming session that was completely corrupt. I don't know what, like, what, I don't even know what happened. I don't know how it was possible for that to happen. So anyway, I was like, okay, let me refilm it. So I did, I refilmed it um, and I did a different look. The first look I used, um, Player One, Game Over, and a tiny bit of 8-bit. The second look I used Continue and High Score. And I lost the memory card of the second look. <laughs> I don't know where it went. There was also some other footage on that that I'm really bummed that I've lost because uh, I physically can't recreate that. Um, so... Uh, Yesterday I spent about three hours looking for this memory card. Um, I don't know where it is. Maybe it'll pop up. And to be honest, if it pops up, I'm not even sure if I'm going to want to edit that damn video because mm, I don't like this palette. And I, I kind of am taking it as a little like uh, sign from the universe just not to publish it and to let this shit go. Um, 
my issue with this palette is uh, that the colors don't blend well. So I love the color story. I love the little pans. I'm not too sure why there's two pinks in there that are so similar in their like color, but everything else is very beautiful and unique. This yellow down here, it's kind of like this beautiful mustardy grungy yellow. It's stunning. The red is stunning. Like I I love the color story. Um, but I find that when I try to blend two colors that are next to each other together, things just go pear-shaped. So the first time that I used it, I was trying to take player one from my outer corner over game over, sort of into the red next to it, and I just could not get it to blend. It just would not, it wouldn't blend. Um, so what I had to do was take some of game over and tap it over player one to blend it in. And then it finally blended. I was like, okay, so the purple won't go over the red. Like it just won't adhere over the red or blend into the red at all. But the red will blend into the purple. I thought that was weird and I thought maybe it was just like the base that I'd used on my eye. Uh, the next time that I used it, I experienced it again. High score, 100% would not go over continue. I even got to the point where I was picking it up on my finger and tapping it over the yellow to try and blend them together. No, no dice. It just would not stick. It would not adhere to continue at all. It would not blend in to continue. It had sort of grabbed onto like this chunk of skin and it just didn't want to move. But if I took continue, and tapped a little bit over high score, no issues at all. It blended beautifully. So I, I, I was kind of like, the fuck with this palette? What, what are you even doing? How is this even possible? Um, but yeah, that, that was my experience with it. And to be honest, it's kind of like, it's kind of turned me off the palette. Um, there are colors in here that I, I love on their own, and I can say for sure that um, single colors will blend beautifully. You know, you can lay down a color and then blend the edges, and everything's perfect. But whenever I try to blend a color into another color, it's like fucking talking to a brick wall. It's nothing. You get nothing back. So I think this is just going to be a palette that maybe I pick out for some brights to pair with something that isn't in this palette because uh, I just I've had nothing but trouble with this every single time I use it and I'm really not looking to uh, drive myself insane by refilming a third look with this palette um, bit of a disappointment but beautiful colors you know the pigmentation is fine it's nothing super duper special, but yeah, it's, I would say that's my fail of the month, unfortunately. Um, everything else that I'm going to talk about is a happy, happy, happy time. So let's start with uh, something that was gifted to me. This is a Natasha Denona Tan, Bronze and Glow palette. And this was given to me by Madeline. Um, this has a bronzer and a highlight, both powders. And then we have a cream base and a cream glow product. This is beautiful. This is stunning, stunning, stunning beautiful. This guy down here, I feel like it looks a little bit full on, a little bit dark. Um, but it actually goes on quite soft and uh, it offers a lot of control with the amount of product that you are actually applying to your face, which I really appreciate with bronzers because... It can be fairly easy to go from like zero to oh shit in just a few seconds. Um, I will say this looks fairly warm, um, but I think it pulls quite cool on my skin. Um, and I prefer it as a contour shade rather than a bronzer. Um, I would be more inclined to go up here with uh, one of these guys. Oh my god, I'm so wrong. I thought it was a cream. It's not. This guy here, it's a powder. It's a powder. This one's a cream though, definitely. 
that's that uh, powder highlighter it feels it actually feels a little bit like cream to powder formula but in the pan it feels like it's powder it's definitely powder this highlight down here uh, I was concerned that this would be absolutely blinding and way too over the top for what I personally like to wear oh, I could not have been more wrong I could not have been more wrong it is stunning and beautiful and when you just like dust it on the face it looks like a beautiful soft glow it's stunning Jesus Madeline you've really like you've ruined me for avoiding Nash Natasha Denona face palettes uh, she sent a blush palette and now the bronzing palette. Now, nah, I'm in danger. I'm in danger. I like them a lot. And I can so easily see these becoming something that I start collecting. I'm not allowed to do that. I'm absolutely not because they take too long to use up. Um, something else that was gifted by Madeline is the Natasha Denona... Uh, I need a nude lipstick in 1B Charlotte. My battery's flashing. Let's have a quick change. Charlotte lipstick. There it is. Um, this is, oh man, this is a beautiful, unique nude. It is a yellowy nude. It's kind of got some baby poop camel like hints to it, but I can tell you this is stunning, stunning, stunning. If you pair this with continue in the sugar pill palette oh the it's a monochromatic look that isn't obviously monochromatic they just pair so beautifully like i can't even tell you stunning 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 color now i do have an issue with these unfortunately uh the formula is not the type of formula that I love and adore. I think these might have a little bit of silicon in them to make them feel like a comfort matte style lipstick. Um, they're not completely matte, but they're like, they're not glossy. They don't really have much of a sheen to them. Now, the reason I don't typically like that formula is because I'm prone to having dry lips. And uh, I find that if lipsticks have either a white base or they have a little bit of a silicony sort of consistency to them it sort of bunches and grips to uh fine lines in my lips and dry spots and because i've always got dry spots um it's a little bit of a problem but what i like to do with this is put it on and then take a clear gloss or a gloss of a similar type of color um i've been using this one by colourpop which Look, I have no idea. It was just a mini, but it's, it's kind of within the same uh, color family. But because these are quite sheer, they pair really well together. Uh, but compare it, like comparing it, uh, combining it with a lip gloss really helps to smooth out that formula, makes it look perfectly opaque, beautiful, no grabbing, no bunching, nothing like that. And it is stunning. Now, even though I don't really adore the formula of these on their own, I'm considering buying more because I know this nude range had some really interesting nude colors in it. And after seeing how pretty this one is, I'm like, I might be tempted. I might be tempted indeed. Um, so thank you, Madeline, for bringing that to my attention. It is beautiful and I love it even though mm, the formula is not my fave but you know you win some you lose some the color of it completely overrides anything that i don't like about it and i found a way to wear it with combining it with a gloss um there is another lipstick is it the last lipstick yes there's another lipstick i want to talk about also gifted this was given to me by anon uh, who also sends us packages over at Beauty News and is extremely generous. I can't even tell you uh, how much people spoil us on Beauty News. It is ridiculous. I love it, but it's ridiculous. Um, this is a lipstick from Tom Ford. And uh, 
You might know this about me, um, Tom Ford released a perfume called Fucking Fabulous and I was dead for it. Uh, you all know I have a little bit of a potty mouth um, and for me that was, oh the birds, yes very noisy birds. Not even my birds, just wild birds, thanks guys. So anyway, the Tom Ford fragrance Fucking Fabulous was just like, I need to own it. I ended up smelling it and it's really not one that I could justify buying. It's very expensive and it's not really a me fragrance. Um, so I, I, I would really be throwing money down the toilet just buying it because I would rarely use it. The lipstick, however, is a dead set gorgeous red and I would say that this is the perfect shade and finish to be called fucking fabulous. It is a true toned or true red, so with a little bit of blue undertones. Uh, it has a glossy finish. It is extremely opaque. It is smooth. It is stunning. The formula is gorgeous. I love it. I love it. It's fucking fabulous. I am so pleased to have it. I have something from the fucking fabulous line from Tom Ford and I actually think that this is probably the most appropriate product to own from the line because I love a good quality red lipstick. Thank you Anon, I adore it. Something else that was new to me this month uh, is the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. So again, I was trying to uh, do a review of this when I was using the Sugar Pill palette in that video, uh, but I just kept, <laughs> I don't know, I just, the universe kept fighting me on that one. Now, this foundation is interesting. Um, so, uh, I picked it up the shade 1.1. It is a uh, fair light for neutral undertones. And I used the like foundation matching thingamajig on uh, Mecca's website. Not quite right, not quite right. Um, it is too light for me. So I use deepening drops to uh, just bring it up a shade or two uh, so I can wear it. And it matches me very well when I do that. Now this is a very, 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 very full coverage foundation. So the first time I used this foundation, I applied it with a brush, like a, a foundation brush, kind of like one of these buffy dudes. And <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. It looked like paint. It was so full coverage, I looked absurd, ridiculous, just so much, so much coverage. Uh, the next time I used it, I used about a quarter of the amount and I used a sponge and I got a beautiful, beautiful finish on the skin. Um, then I would take just a little bit extra and I would like touch up around here where I've got lots of discoloration bit of active acne and I even use it as a concealer under my eyes. This stuff has a beautiful, beautiful lightweight feel on the skin. You can almost not even feel it. It is absolutely stunning and you, you do have control over how full coverage you go with this. Um, I would say you can get a medium to full coverage. Uh, depending on how much you use, but I, I wouldn't say that you'd ever get a light coverage with this because it is intense. It is crazy intense full coverage. If you are the type of person who has a lot that you are trying to cover, um, like, you know, acne scarring or discoloration, um, maybe rosacea um, or just redness on the skin or something like that, I would, oh, I would tell you to see if you can get a sample of this, to try it out, see if you like the formula, um, because the coverage on this is really, really impressive. Now, I would liken this a little bit in its coverage to the Marc Jacobs, is it the Remarkable Foundation? 
it is this one i would say they're in the same boat um with their coverage but i think the formula of this is better than this guy um i find that this is lighter on the skin as in the way it feels like it it doesn't feel like a heavy paint covering like someone took a paintbrush or a roller and fucking roll it over your face with it um and i also think it sits better on skin that is um aging damaged all that good stuff now it doesn't it d does settle into fine lines or it will sort of separate around them like it separates uh around my smile lines and uh i've got a lot of like damaged sort of crepey skin on my chin nowadays um and you know it, it's not um it's not perfect on those areas um but it's not as bad as the remarkable foundation over dry spots i was very surprised um about how it looked because it's supposed to be oil controlling um and you know 24 hour wear and stuff like that so usually um foundations like that if you put them over dry patches they cling and grip and they don't look like very nice um but this one i was surprised i actually think people with dry skin might be able to get away with using this with good skin prep but again i would say get a sample get a sample and try it out before you commit to this because mm, this is you use such a small amount it goes so far this will last a long time um as for the 24 hour wear thing i've worn it for 12 hours and without any touch-ups or blotting or anything i found that i was shiny but it hadn't sort of broken down and do that thing where it like chunks up and looks like fucking cottage cheese on your face uh so that's a pro um but i do think that it needs to be maintained throughout the day so you do need to blot it um to get excess oils off your skin but i think once the oils start to come through with this foundation that's when it really looks beautiful um so you know it, it's one of those things where you don't want to get too shiny but it's not necessarily a bad thing once you do start to have those oils come through um i really like this i really like this foundation i don't think it's perfect um i think it has its flaws another one is that um when you put it on um you've you know you've got a while to work with it but it does set to some degree it doesn't set completely matte i still need to use a powder to like lock it in um but it does set and i find that if i then try to go over it with a concealer where maybe i need extra product or if i try and use more of this to go over it it will lift um and then it's problematic fixing that so you know to me it's not the type of foundation that you touch up it's the type of found foundation that you put on you lock it into place and then you maintain it with um like blotting sheets maybe a little bit of powder throughout the day um and also i've used some sort of denser type brushes to contour while wearing this um so something kind of like this but bigger this is just one that's you know i can reach um but it's you know i'm talking about those brushes that they're not super the hairs aren't loose and soft and fluffy they're a bit denser a bit stiffer um which i like to use for contouring and bronzing because i feel like it offers control and if you accidentally add a little bit too much you've got that sort of stiffness and denseness to help blend um any excess product out so it looks nice and diffused uh but doing that i find that it can lift the foundation as well and once that starts happening you're fucked so it's not perfect but i really like it and i think if you're curious again i've said this several times get a sample um and make sure your color match is perfect and don't put this on in store and go yep that's my color take it outside to see um that you've got 
the right color because I find that this can play funny buggers with artificial lighting um, so yeah but I like it this is like this is probably my most interesting and intriguing makeup pick of the month okay something else that I've been really enjoying this month these guys these are from Innisfree and they are from the filler collaboration. Uh, they're the twinkle glitter hologram like glitter gel things. Now I believe this was a limited edition collection and I believe it's now discontinued unless you can you know find some leftovers. Um, but I have to talk about these because I love them and you can get the same product but I don't think the same colors in Innisfree's uh, usual line. So there they are there. Um, I've got a purple which is called Glass Glowing. The one in the middle which I don't know if you can really see. Uh, that is an orangey shade. It is Evening Glow and then the one on the end is a pink and that one is called Sunlight. But these are stunning. So essentially what they are is um, a transparent sort of colored base um, and it's kind of like a gel type thing uh, so like I said purple orange pink and then it has holographic glitter in it and there's like multi sizes so there's tiny bits there's bigger bits let's let's see if we can do a close-up can't really see the holographic fun but it is there um, what I love about these is they they just work. So I wasn't really sure if these would tick all of the boxes for me. And the boxes that I wanted ticked were, you know, pretty, easy to apply, um, good formulation that sets, doesn't crease, no glitter fallout, and also that they would be, you know... <laughs> Even though they're in different color bases, I was concerned that the bases would be too sheer to really add anything to what they offer. But they do. It's subtle, but it's there. And sometimes I like, I like subtleness. This look looks like it needs some glitter, so, you know, let's, let's do it. Oh my god, I freaking love these. The wand on them is small enough that you could use them as a liner. But then it also is enough to just, you know, spread it over your eye like I have here. Um, they do set. They take a little while to set, but not, you know, not too long. Um, and they don't crease. They hold put. I love it. No glitter fallout throughout the day. Um, and they are just damn pretty. They also don't disturb the eyeshadow when you apply them. So it doesn't sort of lift up eyeshadow and make things look streaky. Should I also put some purple on the outer part? Yes, yes I should. Oh, uh, you're pretty, you're pretty, I love you. I love you, I love you. Uh, so they have been really fun. I stuck them in my, um, monthly makeup basket to play with them and I just find I'm reaching for them constantly now. They are just, they're lovely. They're lovely. I wish I bought all of them. Something else that is totally lovely and along the same vein as these, I was hoping they'd be great but I wasn't sure that they would and turns out that they actually really are. Uh, the Colourpop BFF Cream Gel Liners. Is that what they are? Yes! Oh my god, I did so good. Um, so these, this was from the, the Rainbow Collection. They had like a pack of five. Uh, there's a blue, yellow, green, purple, and a orange one. These are fantastic. The formula is really, really good. I'm so surprised. Uh, they are very opaque. They last really well on, oh, oh dear. I just broke it. Don't wind them up too far. You know that they do have some faults. Um, these, oh, I can't even remember what I was saying. They go on opaque uh, and they last really well. Um, I think, you know, uh, eyeliners are a dime a dozen. You can get them anywhere um, and they don't have to be expensive. But 
for me, a lot of them, I put them on and they just disappear. It's like my face eats them for breakfast. Um, and that's annoying because uh, you you don't want to be reapplying re eyeliner all day, every day. It's, it's annoying. But to be able to get fun, interesting colors like this for, I think these are like five or six US dollars each, and they actually last on the eye and they're opaque and they're punchy and interesting. I love that. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I would totally be comfortable buying these um, in shades that, you know, they bring out in the future. God knows they're going to bring out more in the future. Um, but I really, really enjoy them. I do think like with the yellow and the green, let's see if we can get up close. Uh, I think they're, they're not quite as smooth as some of the others, but they're very punchy. They're punchy, they're opaque. I've been really enjoying them. And something else I've been enjoying is the ColourPop Rainbow Palette. This is the one that they curated. This is a fun palette. Uh, so I did a video on this with some of the other um, rainbow stuff uh, earlier in September. And this is fun. I really like this palette. I think it's great. Um, I have had some people say, you know, $40, it's too much, it's not worth it. And that's fair. If you're not going to use what's in here, then it's not going to be worth it. But I think for a little rainbow palette that sort of covers all of the spectrum of the rainbow, so you've got your sort of deeper shades and then it goes down into the lighter spectrum of those shades, I think it's smart. Um, it does have three pressed glitters in there, so if you are not into that, you know, obviously they're going to be a waste for you, but you can also curate your own palettes on ColourPop. So the option is there. You don't need to have one that's this big or that is like pre-curated. This can totally be used as inspiration to create one that you are going to like. But I really enjoy this one. You're fun. You, you were just fun to use. Alright guys, I think that's enough for me today. Feel free to leave your comments about anything that you saw here down in the comments section. Uh, let me know something that stood out to you this month. Like what was something that you loved or something that just really fell flat. For me it was that sugar pill palette. I'm just... Mm. I don't enjoy using it. Every time I pick it up, it's like a headache. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.